All right, today's daily rehab is to help you stop rolling your knee in. Now, this can happen a lot. We've got a lot of patients who have their knees rolling in, and sometimes it's because of pain in the hip or a knee injury and they've lost some muscle control. But today I'm going to give you four exercises to help the neuromuscular part of it. So there's a lot of exercises out there to help you with glutes and quads and stop your knee rolling in. Today's four is to help those sort of people who've had a like chronic type problem. So you might have had this for a long period of time and no matter what you do, your knee still rolls in. So I want you to try these four and see if this helps you. And we're going to start off with them in order. So as you do this little routine, you're sort of warming up as you go and it gets sort of harder and harder and harder. First one, yes, we're going to do clams, but with clams, what I'm going to try and get you doing is thinking about a little bit more, trying to connect this to that to try and get your external rotation a little bit better because nine times out of 10, this internal rotation or rolling in on the knee like that is because you're weak in your external rotation. Now you might've been doing lots and lots of clam work and be strong in a movement, but are you strong in a movement when you stand on one leg? So we're gonna try and get that connection a bit better today. Hopefully that'll be the middle little piece of the puzzle that you're missing to get that knee control right, especially when you're playing sports. So, clams. Now, traditionally, you do them on your side. We're gonna get you doing them on your back today. And this band does not need to be heavy. I don't really want a super heavy power booty band to work on strength. We're after control and connection. So if you've got this band too hard, thinking that if I strengthen it up, it'll get better, you're probably gonna miss the boat on that. So we've gotta make sure this isn't too heavy, so you've got enough movement and you can do enough of them to get the repetitions, because this thing is about neuromuscular control and that takes practice and practice and practice so your brain remembers it. So when you stand on one leg, it's automatic, it's not just strong. So when you're doing a clam like this, what I want you to think about is, say my right leg is the one that's rolling in, okay? I wanted switch on my right glute into external rotation. So when I do a clam, I'm gonna pull outwards. So when you set yourself up, there's two things you gotta think about. This hip can't rotate, all right? So we've gotta work on core strength here and core stability here. So I'm moving my knee, which means I'm externally rotating my hip in my pelvis. If I move my knee and my pelvis moves, I'm not doing any external rotation here. Okay, I'm simply just rotating my spine, so just be careful of that. The other thing too is keep this leg stable. Okay, so don't pull both out at the same time for this. We're trying to focus the brain on one at a time. This is fine for strengthening, but I'm trying to say, can you stabilize one and move the other? So can you get your brain to coordinate that? Now, tips for when you're pulling it outwards. I don't want you to think just pull outwards. I want you to do two things. Push your heels into the ground. Okay, that'll pre-fire you here a little bit. Then to pull this knee out, you've actually got to not think about stretching the band. Don't think about that. I want you to think about clenching your buttock, pushing through your heel, squeezing your buttock harder and harder and harder to pull that band out. Then you're actually doing that mind to muscle connection directly to that glute. You're not thinking, oh, pull my knee out. You're not trying to tell your brain to pull your knee out. You're trying to tell your brain, clench my buttock and externally rotate the hip, then my knee will go out. I hope that makes sense. That's your prep one. So that's trying to squeeze it on, fire that up, and get that mind-muscle connection working, plus you're warming up the hip, plus you're strengthening up that hip, and you're getting that repetition in there. Get those rep ranges up to about sort of 20 on that, but do it slow. So this is the sort of tempo. Push through your heels, Clench your buttock, pull, 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 squeeze, 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 squeeze. Slowly let it roll back, keeping this core on, not letting this pelvis move. Do it again, push through your heels, clench your buttock, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze through here. Pull that band out by squeezing and then bring it back. So you're gonna be doing about 20 of those, maybe two to three sets, both legs. But obviously work on the leg that's rolling in the most, do more of those, okay? So that is your first one we do. The second thing I want you to work on is a crab walk. Now, crab walks are usually done 
not quite right, okay? When people do crab walks, and I'll show you with the band in a minute, what they tend to do is just step, 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 okay? And they're just working on trying to step sideways and use a little bit of glute med. We need to use that glute med a little bit better and make sure when we do step sideways, we don't let our knee roll in. So this is going to get a little bit more sort of functional, if you like, a bit more relative because you're standing. So again, band does not need to be heavy, okay? That band, again, if it's too heavy, it's gonna pull your knees in, right? So when you're doing a crab walk, I don't want, I'll show you here, I don't want that band so heavy that when you step, it pulls your knee. So you've gotta go from here in a sitting position because we want our glutes on, so the more you're in flexion, the more they're gonna work, okay? And then of course your knees in flexion, so you're gonna get that nice static loading for your knees, which is gonna help your knee control. Now you gotta think, what are we trying to do? We're trying to stop our knee rolling in, right? So that needs to stay outwards. When I step, this leg needs to not be pulled in by the band, so you gotta stay there. You stretch it and keep the knee out. So don't try and reach the foot, because you can see how that's internally rotated. So if you just reach the foot, what people tend to do is do that, and if you look at that, that's internally rotated. So I'm actually promoting my brain to say, roll your knee in. I need to be there. Okay, so don't make a mistake of just stepping sideways and doing that, and then coming in like that, because that's just rolling your knees in. So when you step out, keep the knee out. And that's a bit of a brain thing. So when you plant my knees out, then this one here, don't just let it roll in, see that? Don't let it go boof and come in and step off. You've got to keep the knee out, keep the knee out, step, hold it knee out, and then come in you'll find there's two things going on there. You'll light up your glute meds a lot better. Your external rotation, your hip is gonna be better because you're rotating your knees out. So there's two things you're gonna get better there. Hip stability by keeping your glute meds on and external rotation strength, okay? Which is the two things we need to stop that knee rolling in. Because that, if your knee's rolling in, you got hip control here, which is the abduction of glute med, and the internal rotation thing here. And the two things combine, basically do that. You drop your hip, roll your knee in. So that crab walk is gonna be really good for you to try and tackle both things at the same time and give you that coordination so when you stand and plant, you don't roll your knees in. It's gonna be good for squatting, sport, running, everything. So if you've got through those two, the third thing I want you to work on is your single leg squat. Now, this is probably more about brain than it is about muscle but what I want you to work on is doing what our favorite little step down exercise with the band now you've probably seen this years ago from me this is one of my favorites but I'll just reiterate why you're doing this this band here is a mini power band 41 inch okay it's not too strong I don't want this too heavy because if it's too heavy it's just going to pull my knee in okay so I'm gonna fight, it's going to be too hard to fight with I need some sort of tension that gives me feedback, okay? So it's trying to pull my knee in. I then fight that. That gives me a bit of feedback up through the hip to know what to do, okay? Plus, it also gives me a reference point of where I've got to pull my knee out. So make sure you're not super loose and it's like that. You've got to be at a point where there's enough tension but not too much. Now, the movement is going to be a step down. So you're going to step from here, down, and come back. Now, a couple of things you've got to think about. Of course, you're going to try and stop that knee rolling. That's the whole idea. I want to train my brain like I'm trying to play, pretend I'm trying to get better at golf or get better at tennis. I've got to repeat the movement in a good pattern. So I want to make sure I don't keep doing this all the time. Every time I step down, I don't want to roll my knee in. Okay, so I'm only allowed to go as low as I can control. And when that knee is about to go like that, I don't go that far, okay? So there's no point you're going all the way down and rolling your knee in, okay, and expecting it to get better. Try and make sure you just go to the point of control and then come back. The better you get, the more repetitions you do, the stronger you get, the deeper you'll be able to go, okay? Now, if you start to feel like you're dropping down and you have to put weight through the back leg, you're losing strength here. So don't go so deep that you have to take weight off the whole leg. So if you go to the point here, and you can't just tap that foot, like you can't hold it there, 
then you've gone too deep. Because I don't want you stepping off this and stepping back and loading this back leg. There's no point in that because then all the weight's gone from here and I'm not doing anything here. So keep the weight on the front leg, keep the knee in line, keep the hip from dropping down. Hip stays up, knee stays in line, pulling on that band, down you go, this one's just tapping, and then you come back up again. I probably make it look easier than it seems, but I practice a lot. And that's the whole idea. Practice a lot, you get better, okay? No matter how big your legs are or skinny your legs are, you practice enough, you'll get the right knee control because a lot of this is neuromuscular control, not just strength or size of your legs, okay? So you can have you know, big legs, skinny legs, but still have terrible control. So that is one thing I'd work on. The last one is a skater squat. So what we're trying to do now, that was like my leg going backwards. Now I'm going to try and add in a lateral component. So I've got a, if I'm controlling this way, that's good for running forward, but I also want to control sideways, okay? I want to be able to step sideways or control that movement. So if you're on something like this, like fake grass, you need a slider disc, okay? Something like that's got a bit of plastic on it. If you're on floorboards, you could use, say, a towel, something like that. And if you're on carpet, you can just use your foot. So this thing here, I'm gonna, if I'm going to train my right leg, this is the slider one, okay? So this is the one I want to remain stable. Now let me show you it wrong, and then I'll show you it right. So if I'm going doing this wrong, what will happen is I'll move over the slider disc and then come back. Okay, and that's going to sort of start me working in the groins too much. What I want to stay, what I want to do is stay over the planted leg. So this is light as, this is not doing much. This is doing all the work, because that's what we do when we run, okay? So I want to keep, again, pelvis level, knee over the foot, all right? Thinking about not letting it do that, trying to keep it out. And then as I drop down, as I bend my knee, I'm looking at my knee. I'm sitting my hip back. I'm looking at my knee, I'm going further and further and further. As I drop down here, I'm going further there. So further and further, this is sort of, my center of gravity is going out, which I have to work harder here. And then I push up with this leg. Okay, don't try and drag in with the slidey leg. Okay, otherwise you're gonna start working muscles here, you're gonna take the weight shift off here. So this one has to do all the work. You sit, bend your knee, sit right backwards, what do you got to do? Not let it do that. Okay, this is going to help you keep your level because of that leg there. You just got to focus on this. And you go as deep as you can without it rolling in and then come back up. Think about having like body over hip, hip over knee, knee over foot. You can't go wrong. So, there's my four sort of in a row. If you haven't tried those ones, put that into your program and see if that helps start just slowly bringing that knee in better alignment the more you run and play sport and exercise. And over time, you know, this is gonna take you months, but over time, that should help bring it a little bit more in line, which will stop knee pain, prevent knee injuries. Happy days, see you next time.